Hey there, Bushy here. Three days ago, I uploaded the video how I made those lights from scratch using KiCad, ESP Home, and then integrating it into my Home Assistant Home Automation System. And last night, there were some comments coming in pointing me to an alternative system to ESP Home that I wasn't aware of. And the I'm speaking about WLED of LED, how I will call it from now on. Um, the comments claimed that why not use VLED for controlling these lights much better compared to ESP Home for controlling LEDs? And also not saying that uh, this isn't cool. Thank you, first of all, thank you very much. Or anything, but VLED is much easier and better solution. Okay, today I would like to give VLED or a WLD a try and do kind of a reaction to the comments, trying to put it in action for my lights. So in the meantime, I did a bit of research trying to understand what uh, WLED can actually do and is. And it seems like it is actually fairly similar to ESP Home. It is a firmware for the ESP family, yeah, the smaller one and uh, the bigger ESP32. And either you can get a pre-binary, a pre-compiled binary, or you compile it from scratch uh, and have the chance to change the source code uh, before that. And apparently there are a lot of features that are coming built into this. And I'm really you know, interested to, to find out how that works. It is also a native integration into Home Assistant, which is kind of crucial for me because I definitely want to have it also in Home Assistant. Yeah, uh, and there's a there's already an app that I also downloaded already to my smartphone to give it a try. But the problem is that I figured it will not work, at least not without changes to the source code for my boards. And that is the reason that I explained in my last video that I also will link you somewhere here. Uh, I put a power conversion between the battery level and the five volts for the strip onto my board, and that needs to be controlled by a pin. On default, it's off, and if you don't control this pin and pull it up, the five volts will stay low and nothing will work. So I need to at least need to change and add this to the WLED source code. Otherwise, it won't work. I'm pretty sure about this, but as a matter of fact, I have this little beast lying on my table right now. That is the light that is usually hanging on the backside of my chair, illuminating the, the backside, so the, the background, the backdrop. I have something, something else today there, as you can see. But this one has, uh, I think it is a, uh, whatever it's called, a DMOS. No, it's, it's one of those uh, standard ESP platforms that comes with USB connection. Uh, and that will make it very easy to flash the default firmware onto this guy and then give it a try. And that's what we do today. Under install VLED binary, there are different methods that are supported. So one is through the web installer, which I would not like to take. I would like to go via the ESP tool. And the ESP tool uh, is fairly easy for the ESP8266, which I have here on this particular platform. I will go to the release binaries. I will create the ESP tool. Oh, sorry. I will um, I will install the ESP Pi to a Docker container, a fresh one, and do it this way. I will not go with the beta release because uh, I don't like that. But instead, we will go to the full release. And if you scroll down, to the assets, there is, I think, this one here that is the right one for this board. Copy the address, go over to my Docker, and we are getting this as well. And there we are. And now I should be able to use this command, hopefully be able to Do that. There's no such file. Okay, yeah, right, that makes sense. Then take this one. Okay, cool. It already connected to the board. That worked out of the box. And now I remember that I wanted to show how this light this light actually works and how it looks like. I forgot that. Now we are flashing already, so everything is gone. We will see. And there we are, heart resetting via RTS pin. 
and we are done. As far as I understood how this works now is that this guy will open an access point that I'll be able to connect to and then uh, give it a configuration to connect to my infrastructure, my local one. So that's what we're gonna try now. We try to connect to the Wi-Fi. And sure enough, there is Vlad AP. I'm gonna connect and I need to find out what the password is. Okay. Okay, here we are. Use a Wi-Fi device to connect to the access point Vlad IP. AP and we use let one two three four. That is something I don't like because if I ever see any let access point, I will try to immediately connect to that. Okay, so I'm trying to connect to it. That worked cool. It already gives me a pop up. And wow, that is nice. So there we are. On on the on the uh, landing page and if I go to controls let's see if we can do something already okay I guess that should already work. Requires change, requires reboot. Hmm. Sync interface. No, that is for the communication, real time, network DMX. All the communication, Philips Hue. Wow, there's a lot actually. I like it. Wi Fi, that should not be it, right? Back LED preferences. Yes, Jeep, yes, there it is. Hardware setup, okay, cool. Wow, I, I really, I really like how well this is all done and how many knobs and things you can actually change from the GUI. That is really cool. That's really cool, I like it there. What I like about how ESP Home is for sure that you can pre-tune all the things to your environment if you know it, and then you have everything set up including passwords and it's never going to open a default access point it is just straight going to connect to your infrastructure and you're good to go here of course this is not possible because this is off the shelf but to be honest using an off the shelf firmware and then having and getting those knobs to be able to change things and and so so many of them for something that's open source and freely available is actually quite unique i would say quite Quite significant. Okay, let's uh, stop uh, rambling. I will change GPIO to four. How many LEDs do we actually have? Two, four, six. There's one uh, under all of those um, direction changes. That is something that um, I deliberately accepted, but uh, to make it easier to route the strip on this on this 2D configuration it was easier this way so one two three four five 36 good let's go with with 36 start is zero our uh, length is wait start is zero yeah grb that should be fine uh, ws 281x should also be fine in my opinion uh it is or isn't it I actually, ah, it has the RGBW, so I will select the other one. Color. Okay, this is not changing. Swap. Just give it a try. Skip off, refresh. Auto calculate with white channel from RGB. No, we leave this off. Okay, let's actually save this. Wow, it works. Back. To the controls, take me to the controls. Wow, that is nice. Okay, let's try the white channel. Tune down the color. Is that white? Yes, that's the white. Okay, it's white. Nee. 
Nee. Yes. That is the white channel only, I think. I'm almost blinded. Wait, wait, I can also tear it down, right? I want to tune it on. So that's only white. So it's a four color LED per, per LED. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Sub LEDs in one LED. Um, yeah. Okay, FX. So everything. Okay, FX, nothing's happening. But why? Effects here. Solid. Android. Aurora. I guess uh, in this application it, that all those effects um, that are running through don't really make sense because it's just smashing everything together and um, with a bit of distance you don't see anything. Oops. What did I do? Ah. What happened? Uh, okay, it uh, reconnected to my local network. Why is that? Okay, somehow lost connection. Maybe I need to power cycle the device. No, I can't find it back, so I will power cycle it. Alrighty. So I want to I wanted to try out the effects. See ball. It doesn't make sense, but it's nice to watch. I have to say. BPM. Candle multi chase. Had a couple more connection hiccups here, and then decided it's time to test the home assistant integration. All right, and now I was just successful. I made a boo-boo with the password of my infrastructure Wi-Fi. It's fairly too long. It's fairly too long. Now it works. And I can hit a button and turn the light on from the GUI that I have now on my PC. That is cool. Um, I have a bit, maybe let's tune down the, can I do that actually? Ah, here's the brightness, okay. What's oh, blurred? Okay, that is sound control, I guess. Okay, cool. Now, as a last step, I would like to integrate that into Home Assistant. So let's ho head over to Home Assistant. So that's my my Home Assistant entity now and integrations and add another Vlad here. And the host sits here. Yep, that's all right. Okay, and here we are. Now let's head back to my interface, back, 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 and let's try to add it here quickly. Get rid of this and call it the flat firmware. Wow, there's a lot. We have the IP, we have the LED count, we have the intensity, the estimated current, that is nice. You know what, I'm gonna add this immediately, because I like it. And then we add another card with the actual light. Let's see if that does the trick. We're done. Estimated current is hopefully zero. <laughs> ah, okay, I, I click and hold. Okay, yeah, I, I configured that card. It's, it's, I think it was my bad. Okay, switch it on. Yes, works because we are still in blurred chase. Sounds good. Okay, let's um, disable. Wow, there's so much effects going on here. A DNA spiral. Candle multi. What, uh, what would be cool? Where's rainbow? Freak, freak matrix. Okay, beautiful. Perfect example of why those LED strips are so magical. Oh, there was a glitch, I think. Or, yeah, we lost it. Okay, so I have the feeling that there is a problem. Let's tune it down quickly. 
I have the feeling there's a problem on this particular one with, with the power. But that's fine, actually. I never blasted full power, so let's disable the, the effects for now. And I have to admit, yes, there are a lot. And it, it's tempting to not go through all of them and try them out immediately what they do. Pixels, what the heck? Us. Ah, solid. Solid is an effect, I guess. Solid. Okay, okay, okay. You just need to know that and then it's obvious. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, from the point of view of Home Assistant, I don't see a huge difference now. Also for the things that I want to do with it. I'm not chasing the greatest, nicest, and most weird, weirdest effects possible. Maybe I'm not, you know, getting the full picture yet. That is very possible. I didn't experience such unstable behavior with the ESP firmware, ESP home firmware. I'm not saying this is now related to uh, WLED. Might be. Although I choose the stable release, I understand that it is also... I, I don't actually know how long this exists, although like how rounded the entire ecosystem already is, I have the feeling it is uh, up and out there for quite a while. And also um, that it has 13,000 likes on GitHub kind of indicates that as well. It's actually funny that I never heard about it before. So, But I'm, it's, it's very possible that it's actually my, my board. Um, I'm so interested in the in the segments. I lost connection again. I'm so interested in the in the segments because this is something that is really important for those kind of lights. I showed this in in the other video where you had a sneak peek into the interior. There's also a a chain going crisscrossing uh, across the entire uh, backside of the the light, and then I'm I have a I have a mask in there, printed 3D mask that is separating the lights and the, the bulbs, the, the LED, com, like the LEDs from each other, uh, and then only illuminating certain parts. And that is how I control the different lights and be able to yeah, have all the flexibility there. Okay, so um, I understand that in theory that's possible. That is just as much as I think I need to know for now. This works flawlessly, kind of in the live situation already. I, I didn't cut it up in many pieces. I was flashing it, I connected, it worked. So I've never experienced that before. I'm really impressed how this works. And I can fully understand how people are liking this system. Totally, fully get it. So thanks for the comment. Um, that is. That's really nice system. The integration works well with Home Assistant. The control interface on the on the website for this for the initial state is awesome. The control ability over the over the app, which I didn't try, I realize now. <laughs> it was just the website of the of the web server itself. Uh, that is something that in in this quality I haven't seen really in in the past for sure. So yeah, big thanks for pointing me to this and um, yeah, for giving me the ability to try it out. Nice. Now for the things that I'm doing on a regular basis here in my, in my home, I might actually stick with ESP Home because of the, 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 the simplicity and the ease of use, the quality of life it gives me personally because I can go to a website that is statically living on my on my server in a Docker container. I just fire the Docker container, which is um, provided to me, and it does everything for me. I, I can even multi-cursor editing of the files is, I think, supported. It compiles a custom firmware with the components that I want to have in there, which is great. I have all the flexibility that I need for uh, segmenting the LED strips for lights like this one, for example. There's another one that I need to rehaul in one of the next videos. It then uploads over the air and it just works flawlessly 
for a long time and then I can control it without any problems uh, from Home Assistant as I, as I use it. I also have Home Assistant app on my phone, which is easy enough to, to have all the, the controls there. But I'm not saying I will, I will, you know, completely delete this. Probably I leave it here on this one uh, and play a bit more and get experience with that. Put this back on the on the back side of my chair and then have this as an alternative firmware. I, I have to say this um, connection, those connection losses that I experienced during the testing now are a bit concerning. Uh, if that happens in, in the live, like when it's there in the, in the back, and when I'm streaming, for example, I want to change the light and that uh, doesn't work because the light is, or the, uh, the, the the program is rebooting over and over. And then maybe even losing connection to the access point, going to the fallback own access point. So this is all things that I don't want and I don't need as a hassle. And that would probably make me stick to ESP Home. But for now, I will leave it on and see how that develops. And maybe I actually try out some of the effects and have some fun with that. Yeah, with that, we are at the end of the video. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. It really helps me uh, in, my, in my work and boost the channel. And if you haven't, and if you would like to see more of this, please subscribe. And then we see each other, or you see me in the next sessions where those lights will probably reappear and have uh, their reappearance over the next couple of videos soonish. With that, I leave you to it. Have a nice one. Over and out. Bye.